I'm very proud to introduce you to the speakers in our track today. We have um, Peter van Vengarden. He's the CEO of the first floating farm in the world in the port of Rotterdam. And um, his vision of food is transforming lifeable cities, including food farms, is what we call transformation. Uh, the second speaker in our track is uh, Wouter Baumann. I hope I um, pronounce your name correct, otherwise please feel free to correct me. Um, he works at the Rotterdam Environment Center and is also a rooftop farmer at Dagacker, Europe's first rooftop farm in the city center of Rotterdam. Uh, welcome everyone and we are very happy that you join our convention. I think we start with uh, Wouter because you have a presentation. Uh, but first, I would like to um, ask you to introduce yourself shortly with one or two sentences. And after that, we start with Walter, your presentation. Please, maybe Peter can start quick presentation and then we hand out to Wuta. Thank you. Uh, so I start? Yeah, just quickly, short presentation. Sure. Mm -hmm. sure. Is there some slides maybe? So my name is Peter. Um, we, uh, we designed and developed the first farm on the water over here. You can see it in the background of the camera. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's floating in the port of Rotterdam. Uh, obviously, it's on the water. So for us, it's, it's really important to, to produce food close to the consumers that lives inside cities. Question is, um, uh, where can you find space in the city? And as uh, Wouter will present, there's an option to go on rooftops. There's an option to go deep dive in caves. But there's an also an option to use the water. And we choose, obviously, for the water. So uh, we can continue the discussion maybe later. Mm -hmm. But this yeah, is really yeah, short sure. introduction. OK, thank you very much. Now, Wuta, it's your turn, please. Maybe we can already start with the presentation. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I combined uh, the both. Um, well, thank you a lot for um, inviting me to this uh, conference. I'm really happy to, to speak at this uh, conference. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we were not able to come to Leipzig, but maybe uh, it will uh, happen in the future. Yeah, to Munich. And um, I will give a presentation about the Dock Acker, which is a rooftop farm in the city center of Rotterdam. It's 1,000 square meter. Uh, since a couple of years, people call me the rooftop farmer. Uh, and what we do is we grow um, food, um, and it is fruits, vegetables, uh, herbs, edible flowers, uh, and also honey. Um, it's on the roof, and we sell it to local restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, the, the first slide that you see are the, are the helping hands. Every uh, week we work with a lot of volunteers, a big group of volunteers, and uh, these are their hands, and um, they're very important for the farm, so I uh, always... Um, uh, with the first slide, I, uh, I would like to, uh, to thank them for, for doing this. So you can do the next slide now. Maybe you can just raise your hand quickly so Thomas knows when to um, go on to the next slide. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Next one, please. So this is an overview from the city center of Rotterdam. Um, we're going to fly a bit further. Does it work with the hand? We're going to fly a bit closer. Yeah, and here you can see. OK. OK, I will, yeah. So over here you can see the Schieblok building. It's only five minutes from Central Station. Um, you can see a train in the back, and uh, this rooftop, rooftop farm is uh, 1,000 square meters. It was established in 2012. Uh, and as I told you, we grow uh, products and we sell them to local restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, next slide, please. So this is another view, another time of the year. Next slide. So this was uh, last year. We also uh, open for uh, public at uh, some days a year. Um, we have more than 10,000 visitors each year, uh, which come to the roof and uh, we tell them about uh, rooftop farming, about uh, the advantages of green roofs, um, their um, um, adaptation to, to climate. But uh, we also give uh, education 
um, and the location is rented for uh, commercials. As you can see, we're in a beautiful area in the, in the city center. Um, next slide, please. Of the dark roof. Oh yeah, this is how the roof looked uh, 10 years ago. As I told you, it was established in uh, 2012. So this mm -hmm. is a picture from 2011. Um, next slide, please. So this is uh, a regular day on the rooftop farm. Um, there's also a bistro, which is open uh, for six days a week from Tuesday until Sunday. Um, and as you can see, there are some beans on the left and some edible flowers in the front, and there are some berries uh, on the right side. So uh, next slide, please. These are the tomatoes that we grow. It's just some, some pictures to, uh, to give you an idea about the roof. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so on the left there, you can also see the edible flowers, and in the back there is a compost heap and uh, the ropes that you can see there, uh, the, the tomatoes they grow on that. Next slide, please. The bee master. Yes, so that's me. In Very the, cool. That's me in disguise. Um, I'm also a beekeeper, and uh, we at the moment there are three uh, beehives uh, on the roof. The next slide, please. As you can see, they're really friendly. Uh, I don't need, need to wear any uh, gloves. Mm -hmm. and the bees, of course, uh, take care of the pollination of the all the crops on the roof. Um, they take care of the biodiversity. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and of course, they also produce the honey. And uh, this is the honey which we harvested a couple of weeks ago. We always put them in small jars because there's a, a high demand. And uh, in this way, we can make more people happy. Next slide, please. There are more animals on the roof. And um, these are worms. So you can al already switch to the next slide. Worms, of course, compost all the materials which uh, are leftovers um, on the roof, also from the from the kitchen. Next slide, please. We use the compost for the for the rooftop, but there also comes a compost tea, uh, which is made by the worms, and we put them in small bottles like this, and we call it rotten and water shit. Um, <laughs> and it's a very popular uh, product, which is sold by a couple of shops and web web shops in the here in the city. So next slide. Uh, and since a couple of months, we have our own chickens. You can already switch to the next slide. These are two, uh, two pictures. Um, and since they're quite young, um, they don't lay any eggs yet, but probably they will start doing this in uh, spring. So next slide, please. Um, as I told you, we work uh, on the farm with uh, lots of volunteers. Every Friday, we have a big working day. Uh, next slide, please. Um, at the moment, we even have a waiting list for volunteers. So as you can see, there is time enough to have a nice chat and it's a really um, positive working environment. Next slide, please. Um, the main product that we sell is edible flowers. It's a very special product and it's um, the, the local restaurants are really interested in, uh, in buying these. Uh, it's very hard to pick the flowers and to bring them to the restaurants for, for farmers. And for us, because we're in the city center and we're really close to the, to the restaurants, we can pick them and deliver them within one hour. And in summer, this is really necessary. Next slide, please. Uh, we, of course, we bring the, um, the products to the, to the local restaurants by foot. Uh, I always tell our food doesn't travel foot miles, but it travels foot steps. So it's really close. Next slide, please. Uh, and this is what uh, the restaurants make of all these products. There are four slides with plates like this, so you can uh, forward a couple of slides. And show them in a couple of seconds. Yeah. So as you can see, the edible flowers on the plates. It's really artwork. And also this plate, there is uh, something from the roof, and it's uh, a piece of honeycomb. You can see it in the back. Next slide, please. As you can see, there is uh, the bistro also um, on the rooftop. Next slide, please. Uh, it's open for public six days a week. And as you sit on the terrace, you can uh, you have this view uh, over the, the city center. Next slide, please. 
Uh, as I told you in the beginning, very briefly, we also have an education program. So uh, for kids from primary schools in the neighborhood, uh, on every Monday morning, there comes a school class and uh, they learn how to farm uh, on the roof. Um, they can uh, harvest things, they can taste, they can look for, uh, for stuff. So it's a really fun educational program. Uh, next slide, please. It's one of the pictures. Yeah, next slide, please. Um, this is what we call the water table, and it's divided in two. Oh, one back, please. The water table is divided in two um, in two areas. There is the gray city, and there is the green city. And uh, the kids, they can be the rain clouds. And as you can imagine, in the gray city, all the water will come to uh, ground level. And in the green city, where there are different kind of um, uh, green roofs, uh, most of the water will stay on the roof. So it's very easy for kids and easily to understand that uh, green cities are more uh, yeah, better rainproof than, than gray cities. Next slide, please. One of the latest inventions um, which, which we have established on the roof is the slim duck, which, which means smart roof. Uh, and it's a roof that communicates with the weather forecast and 24 hours before the rainfall uh, falls down, uh, this roof can uh, release water. Um, it's very in innovative and um, we also have presentation about this, only about this subject, but this is the only slide and I will uh, give attention to this subject. Next slide, please. As I told you, uh, a lot of groups. We have lots of visitors on the roof. This is one group from Korea. Obviously, it's not a, a picture from the last uh, months, but this was from last year. It's a group from, uh, I think it's South Korea. Last year, we did 160 tours on the on the rooftop. Uh, this year, this year it's way less. But um, yeah, the, the education is very important for us, and we would like to show what we are doing, and uh, hopefully, people will copy this uh, concept. Next slide. We created a multiple value, value circle. Um, I hope you can see it on your screen because it's quite um, small. Um, maybe people can take a closer look um, at it. I'm not going to tell them all now because of the um, because of the time. But with a green roof, you add more space, more green space in the city. Uh, we have created the meeting point. We do education for kids. There's more biodiversity. Um, the building is more sustainable because of the green roof. Um, we create hospitality because of the bistro. Um, there's healthy food production, local food production. So a green roof is not only fun, but it's really, really valuable. Next slide, please. So these are the four main uh, companies that we work with um, creating this roof. And if you go to the next slide, you can see some social media that you can go to to find more information about the rooftop farm okay wow thank you very much for this great overview um as we, as we saw in your presentation uh, it's a really diverse um rooftop farming from bees to livestock um uh, this is this is really amazing and we will talk later on a little bit more about that what was the intention behind and um yeah what you guys are doing there um, I would like to hand over to Peter. Um, I, as I already told you in the beginning, that um, he is the CEO of the first floating cow farm in the world. Um, Peter, maybe you want to tell us um, shortly um, about what is the farm about and from which attention did the farm was been founded and yeah, the mission behind, maybe. Sure. Thank first, you. First, many thanks to the presentation of Walter. Uh, I think um, the, the project is, is absolutely one of the coolest in, in our city and, and probably in Rotterdam or in, in the Europe. I'm not sure about it, but for mm -hmm. our city, we're very proud on this project. Um, so so you, you, you can produce food, obviously inside cities, you need to find space and you can find space either in rooftops, like uh, the example Walter gave us already, or you can go into caves or uh, you can look into the water. And we looked into the water, a typically Dutch solution, we think. Uh, we have a lot of knowledge on water. Water is very, very scalable. Water is everywhere the same in the world. 70% uh, of the world's surface is water. 
So what we build over here, what we designed and developed over here, can be copied and scaled everywhere almost in the world. So it can differ a little bit with wind or waves, but that's a technical solution to overcome that. So what we have done is uh, we build a farm on the water over here in the port of Rotterdam. And um, we started with the most difficult item. How can you handle big animals inside the city? Um, how can you feed them? Uh, how can you make them comfortable? And that's what we have been practicing since one year uh, and a couple of months. So our cows came in on May 13 last year. Mm -hmm. And um, and um, now one year further, we are really have become a part of the city. So we're gaining all kind of uh, residual streams from the city, uh, some kind of a waste streams that is for us really important that we can feed to the cows. And they upgrade it again to uh, protein like dairies and that we bring back to the city. And the same goes for the manure. We treat the manure and we make it organic fertilizer again that we also give back to the city. Mm -hmm. So it's part of a circular system over here in the city of Rotterdam. And that's also what we believe in. If you want to transform cities into um, transparent and, and sustainable cities, you should have um, integrate farms inside these cities, like the farm of Wouter or now I believe our farm, because it's an essential part of the awareness of people. And it's also an historical awareness. It has always been that way. Before we changed all the green we have in the cities into real estate, into concrete, it has always been a part of our history. So um, I'm not sure if, if you have slides, uh, Julia, to show to the people to see the building. I'm not, I don't see myself now as a video. I'm not sure if I'm in the video, but uh, you can see the building in the, the back of my Yes. Um, is that seen by anybody? Because I don't see it myself. Yeah, yeah, we can it see is. it. It's, it's right behind you. And it's, yeah, it, it's, it's, it looks wonderful. Okay. So thank you for the, for the short presentation. Um, maybe we, we go back to water for, um, for a second. Um, water, the Duck Acker was Europe's first rooftop farm. It was, like you said, established in 2002. Um, what, from which intention was the project founded? Well, um, I have to correct you, it was established in 2012, so we're almost... 2012, yes, yeah, I'm sorry. Almost mm -hmm. uh, 10 years uh, old at mm -hmm. the moment. Um, yeah, I work at the Rotterdam Environmental Center, mm -hmm. and um, we of course want to make the city as green and sustainable as possible. Mm -hmm. and, um, 10 years ago, we moved into this uh, Schieblok uh, building, and uh, there was only a black roof, as I showed to you on one of the yes. pictures on the, in mm -hmm. the slide. Um, of course, we want wanted to make it green, and um, the city of Rotterdam has a green roof program. So uh, we tried to uh, get a subsidy to make the roof green, mm -hmm. only 50 percent. Um, so we were making plans, and then we found out that our neighbors, which is an architecture company, they called Zus, uh, also had ideas to make the roof uh, green. So mm -hmm. and we found out, we combined our forces, uh, and then the Duck Acker concept um, uh, existed. Mm -hmm. to existence and um, the, the great thing is that they joined uh, a contest it's called the city initiative and uh, mm -hmm. it's a group of um, so every citizen of Rotterdam could come up with a nice idea and then a jury would choose uh, five of those ideas and as a citizen from Rotterdam you can choose um, or vote uh, on these ideas and they had uh, a great idea it's called the Luchtsingel which means um, um, yeah, what's the English translation is a yellow bridge which crosses mm -hmm. the city center, mm -hmm. and uh, they created a couple of hotspots. Uh, one of the hotspots is the rooftop farm, uh, and they won the contest and they won the prize of four million euros. So uh, from that money, the, the rooftop also was uh, was made. Okay, wow. Um, so you both have really innovative um, project to shape the future of food in a very innovative, greener way. Um, that's a question to both of you. Why um, did you, uh, Peter, choose to build the farm on the water and not on the land? And um, also for you, water, why, why on a rooftop? Because the pro the project urban farming is not something new, just uh, the locations are changing, and so why is that? 
if you allow me to start, Walter. Um, for us, there's an, so we, we have been starting a company about eight years ago, designing and developing all kind of funny buildings, as we call it, crazy buildings. Some people say crazy buildings, huge buildings on the water worldwide. So we have been designing in Singapore and uh, the Caribbean islands. And also we were working in New York. And when New York was hit by Hurricane Sandy, um, we saw that there was nothing to purchase in the city on healthy food. So all shops were empty. Mm -hmm. And because cities are completely depending on transportation. So it was really nice that Walter, Walter was saying about food miles into food steps. So cities are completely changed or depending on, on transportation. And because the city was completely flooded due to the, to the hurricane, we said to each other, we are, we are specialists in designing huge buildings that can overcome floodings. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the climate changes ahead of us, more rainfall will be there, sea level will be rising. Why not, why not start producing the most important thing for, for people, for human beings, that is healthy food in a climate adaptive situation? So mm -hmm. we can make a farm that is climate adaptive to any climate change and be close to, to, to consumers that, that lives inside cities. So that's where our ID started, to transform one of our IDs, our buildings, into a, a real production farm. Uh, and that's how it started. So that's why we choose for the water. And, and um, thinking about it, after the development and realization, we thought, wow, it's a very nice concept because it's so scalable, it's completely climate independent, uh, it's, it's, it's you can copy it everywhere in the world. It's, mm -hmm. it's, we make use of the temperature of the water, so it's really cool of the water. Um, we can build it as high and as wide and as long as we want. We, we really use uh, three dimensions of the water, as we call it. So, mm -hmm. so we have a background of why we started on the water, and now we are extremely happy that we are on the water. Okay, thank you. Water, what was your intention? Why did uh, the city of Rotterdam and your project choose to, to do it on a, to build the garden on a rooftop? What is so special about that? Um, well, if you look only in Rotterdam, there's already, already 12 and a half million square meters of flat roofs. Mm -hmm. And mainly it's unused space. And that's mm -hmm. crazy because uh, they over, all, most people say that cities are overcrowded. Mm -hmm. But if you look on top of buildings, if you take a drone and you go up, then you can see there's so much empty space on roofs. So, um, yeah, one of our main goals with the, um, with the duck ocker is to show what you can do with green roofs. It's also to inspire people. So um, yes. we want to uh, make roofs accessible for people. So mm -hmm. that reason the rooftop is open for visitors. Mm -hmm. uh, we would love to show what you can do. Um, and of course, um, there's a lot of space on, on rooftops, but it's nothing compared if you, um, uh, it's nothing compared with water, because there's way more water in what you can do uh, fun things on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you both that, um, or maybe I, I read it in Peter's um, on Peter's website, and you also told that before in your presentation that um, you doing both tours in your project and. Um, as the the floating cow farm lies at at the port, it is completely visible and um, transparent from the architecture. And also, you water told me that you're doing tours. So I want to ask you, how important is um, nourishment education at in these days yeah. to um, make people or um, or yeah, to reach the awareness of how they should nourish themselves about sustainable food systems, about um, healthy, about, about their healthy diet. So how important are these things, these education tours, not only for, um, for adults, but um, also for children? Walter? Oh, I would say, Peter, go ahead. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's extremely important. So it's not only important, but it's also a great fun to do. So it's a great mm -hmm. fun to tell the story to young people, old people, doesn't matter about how important uh, healthy food is for our human beings mm -hmm. and also for, for the city. So it's, it's, it's great to do. And what we try to do is uh, use the building as an architectural icon, as something completely different. That's one thing. So we try to make also the profession of being a farmer 
more and more attractive because one of the things that is um, is really difficult, we need to find farmers. You know, we, we, we have a need for farmers. And young farmers, they, they leave countryside, they want to go to the city, and they want to become farmer, but they also want to become in the city. So it's essential mm -hmm. that projects like like the Doc Ocker, like Wouter is doing, and, and we also believe that we are doing, is attracting young people again to become a farmer. So, mm -hmm. so you need to do it at, at, at a sexy way, a sexy manner. And for us, design was really important. Uh, that's one thing. The second thing is, what we strongly believe in creating this awareness is that you should find um, examples to show people that it's really a part of their life. For instance, we collect, as I was mentioning, all kind of residual waste streams from the city. Mm -hmm. one, of, one of our popular streams is that we collect grass from the most famous football club in, uh, in our country. Mm -hmm. uh, we can say that as Rotterdamers. So it's 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 the big it's the finer team uh, from the main stadium. We collect the grass. The grass goes to our cows, and they produce milk of it. And if we tell this story to children, they say, "Wow, we're so close to football. We're so close to this team." And now they make they make really milk of our grass. So so get get with with stories really close to people that 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 mm -hmm. touch them. You know, we do the same with golf mm -hmm. courses, and that's a different audience. So mm -hmm. we try to do, we make stories that is really close to, to several kind of public. Would you please? Yeah, it's really nice to hear that uh, the cows are fed with grass from the Feyenoord Stadium. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> we, we, we will launch it actually. It's, it, we will launch it actually in the first week of October. So I'm telling a little secret. So, but nobody's <laughs> listening, huh? All right. <laughs> okay, then it's only okay. a few people, but they can up. handle secret. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, as I told you, um, there's um, an, an amazing amount of space which is unused, which is on uh, rooftops, and uh, but and mostly if rooftops are used for uh, for green uh, space, uh, they are not accessible. So if you do something and people cannot see it, um, mm -hmm. yeah, th for that reason we chose to make the roof accessible. Mm -hmm. And um, if you want to make it accessible, then people come to the roof and they see a roof, a roof with a lot of flowers, and then think, okay, nice. But there is a nice story behind it, and if you start telling it, then people are really um, curious and amazed by what what is happening on a rooftop in an area which was unused for maybe 40 or 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, and if you show the potential, um, also for kids, so we hope to put small seeds into their minds. Yes. Maybe sometimes when they grow up in 10 or 20 years, the seeds, some, at some point there will be some water or fertilizer and it will start growing and who knows what other great ideas will uh, expand mm -hmm. from that. Can, wow. I, can, I, can I add something Can I add something to Wouter's story? Yeah, of course. Be because um, we, 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 we come there often and it's really amazing that if you look at a city that is completely concrete everywhere, and then you enter his garden. It looks like you're in a complete different world. Inside this concrete world, you come into another world, uh, an, an organic world. So it's it's also really well positioned because you can see the city skyline, but you feel as if it, you are in a, in a true garden. You know, that's it's a really funny context that, that you created, Wouter. It's really funny to see, and also the you feel it actually if you are there, you feel this the separate worlds, the the city world and the in the garden world, it's really funny. Yeah, yeah, it's a great uh, contrast between the yeah. green in the front and the uh, and the uh, architecture yeah. in the back. Yeah. And the funny thing is that <clears throat> because of the boxes that you cannot see the traffic, but you yeah. can hear it. So yeah. if you are on the rooftop, um, it's a quite relaxing environment. But if you mm -hmm. close your eyes and you start listening, <laughs> actually it's quite noisy. And mm -hmm. then you realize, oh yeah, I'm in the city center. True. Wow, we all have to have we all have to come and visit. Of course, to both of the projects. Yeah, of yeah. course, we have to do an excursion. Uh, so, um, so that means um, both of your projects um, shaped the local community of Rotterdam in a very positive way. So, um, maybe to the to the producing of the of the local products and the delivery, we come later. But so it's also both projects are community building, right? It's about um, education. It's about coming together. It's about um, 
people can learn where their food is growing, where it comes from, also children. Um, yeah, what was the impact on the local community and what was the reaction of those two projects to the local community as you told us before that you're selling also the food there locally? Yeah, that's also a question, please, for both of you. Well, there, there's one, one more thing important to add, to add, actually, to your resume, uh, mm -hmm. Julia. That is, mm -hmm. it's not only about awareness of the local community, that's an essential item, but mm -hmm. it's also the, the short chain of distribution. So we have a yes. huge amount of traffic inside every city in the world, mm -hmm. huge amount of traffic, and one on every four trucks is transporting mm -hmm. food. Yes. Uh, it's, 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 it's polluting the world, it's creating... Mm -hmm losses and the quality of food is dropping down very very much by, mm -hmm. by adding all kind of uh, stuff to to maintain it longer so it's essential if you want to have healthy cities breathe healthy air again we should transport food by the bicycle or even by foot like Walter was saying or yes. electrical vans we were only work with electrical vans um, so it should be closely produced because of the quality of the food the clearness mm -hmm. of the air, the sky, and and the the um, the, the loss of food, so that's essential. Mm -hmm. The transportation, yes, it's the positive impact of the environment of these two projects, yeah, it's huge. So it's helping the community, but also mm -hmm. in another way, we're creating yes. blue skies, mm -hmm. we're creating healthy air, mm -hmm. and and that's important. So I just wanted to add that as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you for adding. Can you repeat the question for me again? Because when you were asking it, there was um, the, the connection. Yeah, of course. Went, uh, um, I was asking you, what was the reaction of um, of the local community on, on on your project? Like you told us before, um, it's a it's a great impact for um, the community building. And um, Leah, what was the first reaction when you first opened your doors? It's mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that, that's quite funny because the, um, the first year it was quite dramatical um, because um, we didn't prepare it uh, very well at all. Uh, mm -hmm. After the substrate uh, was uh, laid out on the, on the roof, mm -hmm. uh, we found out that the substrate wasn't um, at that moment working really well to, to grow um, yes. the vegetables. So uh, and we found out this after a couple of months. Um, so then we start adding more water, more fertilizer. And um, so the first year was quite lost. And then we got mm -hmm. a lot of critics from the people uh, around us, mm -hmm. which made us only stronger to go for it even, uh, even more. Mm -hmm. uh, so after the second year, it became uh, better and better. And um, the pictures were, were better. And then people start really mm -hmm. enjoying it. Uh, more people came to visit uh, the roof. We mm -hmm. started to um, do this education program. More and more volunteers uh, came came to help us. So uh, then we came into this positive um, circle. Mm -hmm. um, well, until now it goes on and on mm -hmm. like that. Really nice. Um, when it comes to criticism, um, Peter, um, what was the reaction um, of the people at the beginning? Um, what uh, kind of criticism did you have to face? Did the people worry about um, at the cows, um, how do they feel on water, or, um, yeah, what was their reaction at definitely. first? Well, definitely. Well, the, 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 the most difficult hurdle to take was uh, the, the permit stage. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do something that is what we call completely disruptive, I mean, we're mm -hmm. using a port that is normally used for transportation with ships coming mm -hmm. in and out, and now we're using a port to produce healthy food. Mm -hmm. uh, but the port has no no permit for healthy food production on the water. So that was the most difficult thing to, to overcome. Mm -hmm. Then the second thing was obviously that we started to work with the, the most difficult thing, that is how to handle big animals inside cities. Yes. And, people, and people have a picture about big animals. You can be either in favor or against animals. That doesn't matter. It's about finding technologies to help solutions to, to produce solutions for the world, to produce food in a more sustainable way. So, um, so people are are used to the idea that that cows should be in a huge meadow mm -hmm. that they that they are sent out in the morning at eight and they will come back at five to be milked again. Uh, but that's actually not the case. It's something that that has brought to us. 
So what we show here, and people can see it because the cows are free to go in and out. They walk mm -hmm. in and out whenever they like. But mm -hmm. the first drop of rain, they are back inside. And <laughs> the sunshine, they are back inside. Yes. And when they want to have food, they go back inside. And when they mm -hmm. want to be milked, they go back inside. It's completely automated. But only when mm -hmm. they want to do some little romance, they go outside. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, they, 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 they don't move at all. They only move because they want to have food. So this, this idea that has been created by marketing mm -hmm. teams about how they want to position their own products mm -hmm. with huge marketing budgets, that was something to overcome. So... The people that, that visit us, they always have the same question, shouldn't the cows be in a huge meadow somewhere? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and shouldn't they run somewhere? No, they're not horses, you know? So, so we continually tell the story and, and we designed this uh, in close cooperation with the University of Wageningen. So there's a lot mm -hmm. of knowledge about the habits of the animals, but there's a huge misperception mm -hmm. in the public about a lot of stuff. And people doesn't know how to grow edible flowers or how to deal with with cows, for instance. So we choose mm -hmm. a difficult way, that's for sure. So we mm -hmm. are designing number two, that will be next door number one. Mm -hmm. And that will be more easy probably. But the hurdles to overcome was the perception that people have about a, a, a picture that we have created by marketing for many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, when you talk, because you talked about products, um, you both mentioned that your farms um, have a positive impact on the environment because um, you can offer um, local supply chains and um, yeah, avoid that the food um, who's bought by the by the people is transported a long way. Um, so where do your products go? So where do you sell them? the milk and the cheese and you water the flowers and the bees this is one of our products and 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 we sell them in the city of rotterdam so in the locals in the supermarkets there or supermarket uh restaurants um mm -hmm. all kind of restaurants also mm -hmm. uh, in restaurant of uh, of outer so uh so we sell it only in the city of rotterdam Mm -hmm. But also to the sportsmen in the football team that I, I was telling you about. So we, we bring back the dairy, we bring back the manure as fertilizer for the pitch. So we do everything. We collect the feeds, the feed for the cows from the city, and we bring all the products back in the city. Mm -hmm. so and we have our own nice, store. Um, it would be nice. Do, do you also produce a dried uh, cow manure? No, you don't. You don't yet. Don't yet, okay, because we use uh, dried cow manure on the rooftop uh, farm, Super so um, it would be Super great good. to have uh, a combination. Super good. <laughs> Super good. <laughs> Synergy. <laughs> For sure. Uh, what, uh, you, you told us that you also have a restaurant on the rooftop, so um, the products, the, the vegetables and everything comes from your own rooftop, right? And oh. where did you sell the, the honey and everything? Do you have a, like a food truck or do you sell it directly on the rooftop or... You're also selling it to the supermarkets. Um, well, we don't sell it to the supermarkets because the amounts of that are uh, too small. And mm -hmm. for that reason, we also put them in really small jars. Mm -hmm. uh, but for example, uh, this Saturday, we will um, uh, be on the a local food market. It's called the, the Oostmarkt, so mm -hmm. the harvest market. And uh, all farmers or different kind of farmers sell their uh, produce uh, over there. Probably we only we have to do this only once, and then the honey will all will already be uh, be sold. <laughs> um, so before we put it into jars, I uh, approach the restaurants and I ask them, uh, do we have interest in uh, in buying the the honey cups? So then I I uh, hold them uh, for them, uh, and we also of course keep some of the honey to give it as a present to uh, people that we uh, we work with. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, the, the bistro on the rooftop um, we, we educated. The, the farmers, or, or sorry, the, the chefs, uh, how to mm -hmm. harvest uh, the flowers uh, and, the, and the products. And a um, couple of times a day, they walk around the rooftop and they have their fresh uh, products from the rooftop farm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, like you said, um, you both um, have projects who are, um, yeah, ser serving our environment and um, helping to save it um, for the local supply chains. Um, 
you 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 um, lower the carbon footprint. So how how can we spread um, your your passion and um, how can you both be pioneers of change in the world? of a sustainable food system, like you already, um, I think Peter told uh, told us before that um, this concept was also adapted in other cities. Um, what do you do that um, your innovative projects are spread in the world and maybe will adapt from other cities? Um, are you there in special um, relations or in, in connections, in conversations with others who are trying to adapt these projects as well? Well, in our case, I mean, uh, we're now teaming up with the uh, Sustainable Development Goals mm -hmm. to spread the world more, uh, the word more around the world. We have done many, many presentations worldwide. We mm -hmm. have, like Wouter, received many, many groups from the world to showcase what what this this, this wonder on the water actually. But mm -hmm. that's all finished now. But we are all to, we are all a little bit. Uh, focus and, and responsible maybe that we should change the way of thinking. We have been thinking about economy, economy, economy and money, money, monetizing everything only. And this is um, this is a, a, a challenge that also Wouter, I'm sure, he's also thinking about it in a different way, the same I do. It's not about making more and more money. It's, it's, it's about making a healthy environment. Mm -hmm. An environment with clean air that we like to breathe in and that like that we like to live in, mm -hmm. and I just cannot imagine. Really, I cannot imagine that we keep on thinking. If we talk to investors, we talk to a lot of investors, and many many people want to invest in our concept to spread it around the world. But if you look at the authorities, and they are still thinking about this this what we call the the, the hockey stick. Uh, how how fast can I have my return on investment back? Mm -hmm. And then we say, no, you have a return on your healthiness back. So, so isn't that more important for you and the generations next to you? Mm -hmm. So that is essential to spread more and more projects around the world. We should really skip thinking about money only. And um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure that we can create a better world if we skip that part. So that's an essential one. Thank you for this view. Wuta, what what are you doing to spread the world of um, sustainable food systems? Yeah, well, um, uh, in 2012, we were the first in Europe. Um, at the moment, uh, there are a couple of more rooftop farms in uh, in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter is the first one in the world, so he cannot uh, team up with any other floating rooftop or floating farms. Mm -hmm. uh, but but we can, um, and uh, there are rooftop farms in Copenhagen, in Brussels, Antwerp, uh, Turin, uh, and there's a big one in Paris. Uh, it opened a couple of months ago. It's 14,000 square meters. Uh, and we have this uh, informal um, group and meetings um, to, to share knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are also invited by an uh, Italian uh, university to uh, join a, a European um, subsidy for an uh, online uh, course for rooftop farming. Uh, and of course, we want to share knowledge and therefore we give uh, tours, but uh, we also receive groups from other countries uh, and give them workshops. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, like um, Peter said at the beginning, that, um, that a lot of young people want to become farmers again, but they want they also want to be in the cities. So um, uh, urban farming actually then is the is the solution for for both producing closer to the people, becoming a farmer, and um, producing your own food for the people around you. And um, do you think or? Is, is sometimes are you criticized for your project that um, uh, that your kind of farming will replace the traditional traditional agriculture family farming on the field on the countryside? Sure, uh, everything that is new, everything that is innovation has as criticism. I mean, mm -hmm. of course, we want to stick to the history, but that's not realistic, you know. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, young people want to be a farmer, but they also love gaming. So, <laughs> so the, the question is actually, is farming still a family business? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is a family business, in my opinion, but a different family business. So young yes. people want to run the farm maybe with cameras or with their phone or stuff like that to make it sexy, to make it high tech. 
and still be with their hands in the mud. Um, so it will be a combination. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, 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 and really, really integrated in city projects. So I think it will be a hybrid model where we a lot of production have, we have it in the city, but also on the, the landscape around us. Uh, so Oops. Sorry, someone is ringing uh, the door. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a package. Uh, yes, true. Um, the key is to 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 attract these uh, kind of job um, to young people, as um, so many families have to leave their the the farm because nobody nobody else is one is going to doing it, and um, so this maybe is the solution. Urban farming. And uh, what do you say to that, Walter? Um, well, when I when I uh, studied in the Wageningen University, where Peter spoke about, we also had um, a course, and it's called, um, yeah, what's the English translation <laughs> for that? Uh, reviewing uh, rural areas. Yes. So farmers nowadays uh, don't only do their work on the land, but they also have. Um, side jobs to gain more income. Yes. Uh, the, the role I have on the rooftop farm, um, I'm a rooftop farmer, but I don't mm -hmm. only grow uh, products on the mm -hmm. land, on the rooftop, but we also do uh, uh, education tours. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, give, uh, but we also do tours, but also do education. Mm -hmm. but I'm also managing the area because there are quite some commercial uh, mm -hmm. activities um, on the roof. There was, for example, G-Star and Timberland and Spec Savers, and they mm -hmm. rent the area for their commercials. Mm -hmm. So being a rooftop farmer is, yeah, you have to know how to grow plants. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a lot of other activities that you have to do nowadays to be a yeah, farmer. Yeah, you have to be an all-round talent, we can say. Um, Urban farming is, is not a new technique. People um, has always been growing their own food in cities and um, and regarding the, the, the rising population, why is urban farming becoming so popular and why is it so important for the future to deal with growing um, communities, growing population and the need for uh, sustainable, healthy and local produced food? Maybe, Peter? Well, to, to me, it's obvious. I mean, people are... Um... Uh, they, they really like to have a, a better food product. Mm -hmm. So, and if you produce locally, you don't need all kinds of stuff to conserve the the products. So it's it's more tasty, uh, it's more healthy. Mm -hmm. so locally produced people really appreciate the quality of the food better. Mm -hmm. So 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 that's one. The second thing is. Um, they, they really like the honesty of the hard work that a farmer needs to do to produce it. So they appreciate that and they reward that by purchasing it local. Mm -hmm. um, second, thirdly, the, 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 the story about shortcutting the transportation that is really appreciated as well. So creating a healthy environment. Mm -hmm. So it's really a combination between the consumers and the producers that together we, we grow and we will uh, grow also economically, but um, yeah. So so maybe that's that's the first answer. Maybe Walter, you can add something to it. Or yeah, um, well of course there's a lot of food waste, uh, which is a hot mm -hmm. item at the moment. And if you produce your food locally, um, there are only short transportation lines. So I think the the waste is uh, reduced a lot. Mm -hmm. um, also, I think when you have a plate with a mule. Um, I think your food has traveled 1,000 kilometers mm -hmm. on your plate. Yes. Your so that's quite uh, amazing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because of uh, climate change, I think it's important to uh, reduce the, um, the the food miles from from your food and local food uh, can be one of the uh, uh, things that that make that happen. And. The nice thing about local food is then you can see where the food is coming from. The, the people who are in the bistro can see their food growing, mm -hmm. which is on their plate, probably mm -hmm. has been on the roof one hour ago. Um, mm -hmm. so the food has a story, 
Um, and this is also what people uh, yeah, like. I also I agree totally. I think uh, the story behind food makes it even more attractive and also maybe to pay a bit more because they see the work behind and the effort uh, needs to be taken. Um, what are your plans for the future for your both of your projects? Um, I read on your website, Peter, that um, you're planning to build another farm um, next to the other one. And maybe also to Wouter, what are your future plans and or what are your plans in the near future on your rooftop farm? Uh, well, if I may start, Wouter, um, we, were, we were about to build the second one in Asia. So we have been very, very close talking into China and to Singapore. Uh, you know, if you look at Singapore, for instance, Singapore imports 85% of all their food. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to be depending on other countries for this anymore. So mm -hmm. many, many countries, they want to produce their own food. So there's mm -hmm. a huge market potential, and that's good for, for the countries, for us, for everybody. So we were talking to many countries and cities abroad, but as of uh, the pandemic, that is completely shut. So that's, that's, that's brought back to zero. Mm -hmm. And um, we had in mind to do a second one in the port of Rotterdam as well. Mm -hmm. So that's our number one priority right now. So we build the second one where we, uh, uh, we hope to open in maybe one year. We wait mm -hmm. for the permit. It's really difficult again, even for number two over here. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for the permit, and then we will open that uh, somewhere next summer, I hope. Mm -hmm. And we take it. Wow, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wouter, well, you have the last minute of your for your future plans. <laughs> Sorry, about <laughs> That's a challenge. <laughs> well, no, I, I will make it happen. Yeah. Well, the the area that uh, our building is in is in uh, in development. So probably a couple of the buildings around us will be torn down, and um, they will be built new ones instead. Uh, but we have to plan to um, to to grow this rooftop farm to the uh, rooftops, which are uh, now our neighbors. Uh, and there was even um, an intention by the city government who say that um, in the new area, um, urban agriculture on rooftops has to be has to come back when the area is uh, redeveloped. So we are very happy to hear that. So there's a serious intention to have more rooftop farming uh, on the buildings which are directly around us. And we want to have a share in that. That would be great. Wow, thank you. So this is already the end of our session. Unfortunately, I have tons of more questions for, questions for you. Um, I thank you very much for your time and for your great insights on these two um, green innovative projects. 